KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. That's right. It's KP's video news, y'all. Yep. Had to do a little mic check there. One, two, one, two. Yep. Tell you. How's everybody doing today? It's time for the big old weekend. Got my new banner up. It's a little bit bigger than the last one. Doing pretty good with that. Kind of like the way it feels things in. Yes, sir. KP Video News is moving on to bigger and better things. Yep, moving on to bigger and better things, folks. Okay, uh, anyway, let me get started here. It's a story. It's a story about LAPD cops that shot a man after acknowledging he was unarmed. And the body cam footage shows that. So immediately after... LAPD officer shot a 39-year-old black man in the back several times. The department claimed this officer believed he was carrying a gun. And body camera footage of, of the July 18th incident released this past Wednesday. However, an officer can be heard saying, it's not a gun, bro, as they pursue him on foot. 911 caller had alerted law enforcement to a man walking around brandishing a black semi-automatic gun. According to audio of the call, responding officers came across Jermaine Pettit, who uh, partially matched the caller's description of the suspect several blocks away from where the incident was reported. In the footage, Pettit uh, is seen walking away as officers converge on him with their weapons drawn, and the officer says, what is, bro, you said that's, that's not a gun? Drop it, another, uh, says another, identified as Officer Daryl Glover Jr. as they chased Pettit across the road as LAPD Sergeant Brett uh, Hayhoe, a uniform supervisor, as lost LAPD Chief Michael Moore would put it in a later day, pulls up alongside Pettit in a squad car and multiple shots are heard in the footage. The Pettit collapses as he shifts on the ground. Officers yell to each other to take cover and a 39-year-old for the uh, uh, and for the 39-year-old to stop reaching for it. The shooting of Pettit, an Air Force veteran with a history of mental illness, including PTSD, marked the LAPD's 20th of 2022. The release of the footage on Thursday was first flagged by Streets Blog LA and uh, William William uh, Jude. Hours after the shooting, a department spokesman told reporters the victim had been armed with the weapon. Two days later, however, Moore walked the allegation back, telling the Board of Police Commissioners that the object had not been a weapon but a car component. Images released by the department last month showed the object in question, a six-inch black metal object identified by Moore as a latch actuator. The police continued to insist that the officer involved had mistaken the actuator for a gun, with one capturing it as a non-functioning firearm. Wow. In a half-hour town hall on July 28th. After the shooting, Pettit was transported to the hospital where he remained in critical condition for several days. And according to a GoFundMe set up by his doctor on July 29th, the LAPD said that Pettit was recovering from his injuries but was being held in, in the hospital on two outstanding arrest warrants in lieu of a $100,000 bail. It was not immediately clear on Thursday if Pettit remained hospitalized with a request for updates on status filed by uh, uh, file was not immediately returned. Two days after the shooting, law enforcement recommended that LA City attorneys Office filed two charges of brandishing a, a, rec, a replica firearm against Pettit. They know it's not a gun, and they still recommend that he get charged with brandishing a replica firearm. Boy, I'm telling you, a spokesperson for the L.A. City Attorney 
uh, Mike Fuhr said Thursday that the case was is still under review by his office and investigation into the incident by a police department remains, uh, you know, ongoing. Wow. I'm telling you, man. Boy, I tell you. Partially matched the descriptions uh, of the suspect several blocks away from where the incident was reported. Wow. He was black. I guess that was the, the partial match requiring them to draw a weapon on an unarmed man and shoot him. Oh, boy. It's kind of crap, man. It's just really tiring. It's kind of tiring, and it's, and it's at the point, man, where you, you know, you uh, really get tired of hearing this garbage. Really get tired of hearing this mess. Okay, next story. You got Elijah McCain. And uh, they had an autopsy, the autopsy for Elijah McCain, and on our, another unarmed black man who died with a struggle with police in Colorado was changed in response to new evidence from a grand jury investigation. However, she says she cannot release the amended report because of the court order and oath she was required to take in January 2021, which bars her from revealing any information from the grand jury. The Attorney General's office has informed me that the amended autopsy report therefore contains confidential information that is covered by the court's order and my oath. So that was somebody that stated in a statement on July 20, uh, to August 2019, McLean, who was 23 years old, was walking home from the store when he was apprehended by Aurora, Colorado police officers responding to a suspicious person called walking while black. All, uh, police said McLean had resisted and he was placed in a uh, uh, carotid hole. Paramedics diagnosed McLean with excited delirium and administered a powerful sedative, a ketamine. He suffered a heart attack on the way to the hospital. Three days later, he was declared brain dead. An original autopsy listed McLean's death it's undetermined. The coroner's office had not said when it received evidence that prompted a change to the autopsy, and it's unclear when the autopsy report was amended. Yep. The three Aurora police officers and two paramedics are facing charges of manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. In 2021, the city settled a civil lawsuit with the McLean family for $15 million, and the Aurora police and fire departments agreed to a consent decree to address a pattern of racial bias found by state investigation. Wow. I'm telling you, man, that, that whole that whole city police department is under a consent decree by the by the federal government. That means the federal government is monitoring everything that they do. Okay, here's another situation. They got a woman uh that uh has a situation with a difficult ethical dilemma in the in the post uh she explain explains how her son is just starting year six of prep school and that recently another another mother not well known to her asked to borrow forty six hundred dollars that she can't pay next term school fees she explains in the later post that she uh she grew up poor and sometimes feel like a foreigner in the land of the rich. Although the gut reaction was no way I found myself second guessing it and worrying. She explained that the money isn't an issue and that if she was a close friend, I would, I would, uh, would without hesitation. However, I hardly know her. We chat at the school gate, uh, matches, et cetera. And we had a couple of quick coffees back in the day. And that's really it. A survey from the 2019 uh, by financial advice company bank rate of 2,490 adults found that only 60% of Amer Americans have helped out a friend or family member by lending cash with exp expect uh, expectation of being paid back, while 17% have lent their credit card and 21% have co-signed for a financial product like a, a loan or a rental. However, more than a third, 35% of the people who lent 
in at least one of these ways were uh, negatively impacted, resulting in lost money. So the backstory has emerged as a long-term debt. Also, she, uh, you know, feels sorry and expresses concerns that the mother won't be able to pay the money back. So you had someone at the, uh, someone that had requested and for, uh, so some users suggested that the mother speak to the school about the payment options and others said, don't lend it, but you could su uh, suggest she speaks to, speaks to the school, there may be support available. And another one said, another person said, decline and suggest she talks to the, the people in charge at the school as a matter of some urgency to arrange how she can pay by installments for the next six months. But so here you got other people telling this particular person that has the money that is kind of willing to, uh, you know, a rich parent and, and a rich parent is urged not to help a school, a school mother that's, that's struggling to pay the $4,600 fee. So it's like, wow, man, people can really be, really be crazy out here these days. They can really be crazy. You trying to stop somebody from, uh, you know, stop somebody from, you know, helping somebody else. That's, uh, that's really bad. That's really bad, man. That is really bad. You know, when, you know, what, what is going on in the world today when you can't help another person if you decide you want to help that person? You know, you know, I'm, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I do not get it, and uh, don't even ask me to to uh, try to explain that because you know I'm not I'm not living like that. Anyway, uh, we got a dude, man, that was uh, pretty bold. Pretty bold, man. He's in court. He's in court. The other day, in I think it's Broward County, Broward County, Florida, and uh, <laughs> he decides, out of all things, uh, hey, you know, you're gonna try to flirt with the judge. And looking at the judge's picture, hey, she is a she is a cutie, but uh, <laughs> uh, and so. This case, uh, it's a case of flirting with disaster. The Florida, Florida man who was in court this week on a burglary charge is trying to show off his, his smooth talking skills and what may have been an attempt to sway the judge, but he still saw his bond set at five Gs. Demetrius Lewis appeared in a virtual hearing before Broward County Judge Tabitha Blackman in Flor uh, Fort Lauderdale Thursday. There he tried and failed to flirt <laughs> with the judge on the bench. In, uh, in the you know in the video he said you know how you doing he asked all right I'm good sir how are you the judge replied and smiled he said judge you are so gorgeous judge judge you just gorgeous he said and she and the judge replied okay Mr. Lewis flattery will get you everywhere but not here it's not getting you nowhere here buddy <laughs> <laughs> the judge told the man she found probable cause for the charges burglary and possession of, of the drug ecstasy. Maybe he was still feeling that ecstasy, man. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, he's still feeling that ecstasy, man. He over there trying to trying to rap to the judge. But like I said, I, you know, the judge is, you know, she is fine. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, you got good taste, but it's just the wrong place. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to leave it right there, folks. I'm going to leave it right there. It's KP's Video News. And, uh, <laughs> ah. hey, it is what it is, man. Shoot the shot. <laughs> KP's Video KP's News, y'all. KP's Video News, y'all.